Welcome back to 8701. Um, so in this second chapter, or chapter number one, we start talking about quarks and leptons in the actions and fields. And we start by a very general discussion of quantum fields and matter. Mm -hmm. So you all know that what we mean by particles and forces in a classical sense. Um, however, we need now to uh, see how they connect with quantum fields and how this helps us to consider matter and forces in a very similar way. The modern view of the basic way that particles come to exist is in terms of quantized fields, which is an extension of the quantum mechanics you love and know, um, which you have done before, um, where you quantize particles. These fields have quantum equations uh, for the field amplitudes, which are basically like the quantum um, simple harmonic oscillator but there are an infinite number of them, one for every possible frequency of a wave in the field. This means the amplitudes for the wave for each frequency are therefore quantized in integer steps, uh, just like a simple harmonic oscillator. This is uh, what we see as a particle. The first excitation gives one particle of a frequency, a further excitation of the amplitude uh, for the same frequency corresponds to two particles, etc. etc. So hence the concept of quantum field, unlike normal quantum mechanics, allows an arbitrary and changeable number of particles to exist. This is necessary, as we will see later, um, such that we can create and annihilate part particles in reactions and decays. Um, and the standard wave functions correspond to an equation of a particular frequency amplitude when it is exist when it existed. So now just let's consider a few cases here. Um, um, imagine you have you know two particles, two fermions, for example, let's say two electrons, um, and you consider the wave function. Um, quantum field theory um, actually says that there's only one electron quantum field for the whole universe, and every electron which exists is due to an excitation of the field. Hence, all electrons are identical in a quantum mechanical sense, and they all arise from the same field. Uh, the theory says then that uh, particular properties for the resulting wave equations, namely their symmetry, under exchange uh, of these particles. So the actual symmetry. Um, depends on whether or not the particle is a fermion, uh, which means it has spin one half or uh, three halves or five halves, etc., or a boson, which means that it has spin one, zero, one, or two, and so on. So, for any ident identical fermion, an electron, a quantum field theory says that their wave function must obey uh, the property of anti symmetry. Um, this means that when we write an overall wave function and we replace two particles, we pick up a minus sign. Uh, this property is just not, not just for, for, for electrons, but for all fermions. Um, that's all matter particles, as we saw last week. So it also holds for composite particles. A composite spin half particle um, uh, is subject to the same anti-symmetry. Um, this probably, probably Property of exchange anti-symmetry leads to a well-known um, um, principle, namely the Pauli principle, which means that you cannot have two electrons of the same energy state or the same state um, because then you would actually swap them, you find that they're identical, which means a uh, star contrast to the actual description of the state function. So this doesn't really work. And therefore, two electrons or two fermions cannot be in the same state <laughs> in very general. Constructing a, a wave function or, or a total wave equation for two fermions is not that hard. You can simply do this by, uh, by, by this construction. An uh, important additional um, statement or note to take here is that an antiparticle, such as a positron, is not identical to a particle, um, such as the, the electron again. Um, if you move on to bosons, boson exchange is symmetric, meaning that you know if you replace two bosons, you find the identical wave function. 
and then constructing a two boson uh, total wave function, we do this by adding those two functions together. This is by definition symmetric. Let's move now forward to uh, exchange particles. Again, you have a very good idea of the classical picture how forces are transmitted. Um, so the modern picture, however, um, of how a force uh, acts under quantization is by emission and by absorption of a particle. So this is shown in this diagram here, where you, let's say you have an electron and a second electron, they see each other and they see each other by emitting and absorbing photons. And you see this here, so this electron comes along, maybe emitting a photon, this electron here emits it, and by this exchange of emission and absorption of photon, those two particles, the elect those two electrons see each other. So this, you know, you can think about like, you know, two ships shooting cannons if you want, but this would all, um, um, but you also have to consider that there is not just repelling forces, but also attracting forces. You know, it could have replaced an electron with a positron and the negative, two negative, the negative and the positive charge could have attracted each other. This is it for this, uh, for this uh, short, um, uh, basically an intro into the intro of the intro. Um, I hope you enjoy this. All of this concept we go into more detail. This is really just the starting point. Um, and in the next lecture, you'll see how we can actually understand aspects of this um, diagram here, which we call the Feynman diagram.